hello, hello, Transurfer and the Transurfing Curious. My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Transurfing TV. And today on Transurfing TV, one of the oldies but goodies, we're going to go over importance. I know that this is such basic Transurfing, but I do definitely see lots and lots and lots of new people coming to this modality. I'm going to try to talk on the basics a little bit more and integrate them into the flow of my videos. And also too, it's never really a bad idea for advanced transurfers to just go back and like resonate with the very basics of this modality to keep things adjusted, right? I'm in a really cool position because talking about all this stuff daily, being in this position that I'm in, I am always sort of like reinstating, right? Reinstating my my beliefs that, okay, this is what my program is and this is what works. And then when things start to go awry, it's because I'm forgetting about this, right? I'm sort of like in a constant state of like tuning up, like when you go and you have your car tuned up. So I'm just always in there like adjusting and working and I have to say, as many of you have seen, I have, you know, drop importance tattooed on my body. <laughs> This helps me a lot. This tattoo really was just for me to daily have a visual reminder of what my philosophy is and how having this philosophy has helped me in creating a reality that suits me and brings me pleasure and I enjoy and produces and yields positive results and success and all that stuff. And a lot of transurfing as a whole has to do with resistance and lack thereof, right? In a lot of ways, we actually create resistance in our lives with the things that we want. That's why Vadim Zeeland saying, I do not wish, I do not hope, I intend is so powerful because I intend is opening up that path from where you currently stand to where it is you want to go and declaring to your external environment, I'm going there, right? It's not a matter of if I can get there, it's not a matter of I wish I could get there or I hope that kind of life would be available to me. I hope something will happen that I can have that kind of life or topic of the day, importance. A lot of times importance gets in between a person and that goal on that path, right? And it's this importance that creates a bunch of negative feedback and balancing forces and excess potential and high emotional states that aren't good for that movement towards the goal, right? They're not, they're, 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 they're counterproductive, right? So one of the classic examples in Vadim Zeeland's book, Reality Transserving Steps 1 through 5, the woman that wants to get married to her boyfriend, right? And she starts nagging him and she's got all this pressure and she, you know, wants this thing to happen. She wants to get engaged. Well, sure enough, the boyfriend becomes tired of her nagging about it and ends up leaving her. So her importance levels and how she goes about trying to get from that point A to point B actually created so much negative feedback and imbalance and chaos, really, 
that she got the exact opposite of what her intention was. And this is why this is so often the case. This is why we oftentimes achieve the exact result that we don't want to see. Financially, we could say the same thing, right? I want to make some money, so I've got importance on making money. So then I'm looking to my reality with these high importance levels, and somebody says to me, hey, I've got a good investment for you. Why don't you invest in Bitcoin, right? But Bitcoin's high, right? Bitcoin's at the top. But my importance levels are extremely high in making some money. So that's what drives me to make a poor investment. And then sure enough, money goes in to the Coinbase account and then Bitcoin tanks. <laughs> and you end up losing money. But your intention was to make money. So why did this happen? Your importance levels caused you to make some bad choices or for you to take some action or make some moves in your external environment that wrecked the whole situation. So learning how to evaluate where it is you are working from and what it is specifically you are doing in your external environment to achieve results. And if you are acting out of importance or desperation, or if you have excess potential, which I will get into, excess potential about something working out, this is just uh, importance levels that have built up over time, right? And then balancing forces come in and eradicate the mess that you have created emotionally, energetically, with your state of being and your external environment. And this is always the thing that we don't want to see happen, right? So before I get started on some tips on learning what importance is, if you're new to this channel, assessing where maybe you have too much importance and how to level that importance out, I will get into these things. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Join us on the Facebook group, the International Transurfing Institute Facebook group, Instagram, reality underscore transurfing, and Tufty and Reality 2.0. I've got an amazing lesson on importance in Reality 2.0. This is if you are new to transurfing and you want to learn the basics and really just lay it down, Reality 2.0 is definitely going to get you there. Okay, so first, what is importance? It is attributing excessive value to something, right? It's important that I get married. It's important that I get pregnant. It's important that I make money. And as soon as you do this, you have declared to your reality that it needs to match up with the version of reality that you want to experience Otherwise, you are going to be disappointed, wrecked, let down, devastated, all sorts of emotional stuff. So remember that reality transurfing is all about maintaining your energetic position in the alternative space. You don't want to be doing a bunch of up and down, right? Because if you go too high, then balancing forces will come in to bring you back down because you can't just keep at a high, high emotional state for an extended period of time. Something will happen to bring you back down. This is the, this is the nature of reality. It always strives and seeks out balance, right? And if you're too low, then you're on one of those bottom lifelines that none of what it is that you want really exists. This is you being depressed. This is you not feeling good about your life. This is you not having the things that you want. So let's say that you get super excited over something. You have a job opportunity, right? And you're like, oh my God, I need money and I really need this job. And you go into the thing and you're super enthusiastic, maybe too enthusiastic. Maybe you come off as fake. 
maybe you're just a little too much and they're like, yeah, that's not the person for the job. Your emotional state's high. You've got a lot riding on this job interview. You need the job, you need the money, but then you never get the call back, right? So you went up emotionally, state of being, except expectations, you built excess potential, and this was all via your importance levels, right? So what happens is you're not getting the job, you then plummet, you go down, and you go down lower than even your base level. So you go into a depression. So see how this works? When you have importance, excessive importance, when you've attributed value to something that is not the way that the world you know, works, so we can't just say, oh, this is so important that I get this. And then the world's just like, okay, well, here it is, right? That's not how reality functions. So again, balancing forces come in to eradicate your importance levels and sort of set you straight. And in this setting you straight, you go down and you go down lower than you normally go. And then you have to work and spend energy and do things internally with your thoughts and your thinking and all sorts of things need to adjust for you to get yourself back up. And it's in this space of you getting yourself back up, all of this energy that was lost and then you having to work yourself back up to a place where, okay, now it's time to go out and look for another job then. If you had approached the first job with like, okay, I intend to have this job. I'm gonna do my best, but, and I'll get to this more in a moment, run my negative slide that I don't get it and I'm going to go into that interview cool as a cucumber, right? And just tell them who I am and what it is that I offer and use some frailing, right? Going in with minimal importance levels, you don't create that imbalance. You don't rub people the wrong way. You don't appear desperate. You don't go into something with a high emotional state that if you don't achieve the thing, you're gonna be devastated. And then you either get the job, right? Because your environment didn't feel the need to balance you out and the people responded positively to you because let's face it, when you go into something with low importance levels, we see this in the dating world all the time, you know, you go into a date acting like a desperate person that wants to get married and have a family right away, a person that you're going on a date with is gonna go screaming for the hills, right? If you go in there like you really don't give a rip, that's gonna be highly attractive People that have low importance levels are more attractive than people that have high importance levels. Nobody likes a desperate human being for any reason, right? But particularly around jobs, money, love, that sort of stuff, it's like low importance is absolutely key. Plus, you keep your energy levels high, so if something doesn't work out, and I'll get into the negative side here quickly, then you're like, okay, I already assumed this situation might not go in my favor. Um, okay, it didn't work out. You're on to the next rather than having to recover because you just got completely wrecked by balancing forces, right? Coming in to eradicate your importance levels. So two, quickly, this was what importance was, number one. I know that was a little bit long, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> two, assess where you have it. Everybody's got importance levels. You're never gonna fully drop your importance. Dropping importance is kind of a fairy tale, right? You can lower your levels. You can manage your levels. You might one day have a little bit of elevated importance over something and then you manage it and you go on for a while and then maybe you have to check yourself again later down the road, right? Assess where your importance levels may be throwing you off balance. Usually money and love are the biggest ones. And then work to manage your levels. Call yourself out when you feel as though one, you, you sense that your importance levels are too high or two, your reality is telling you that your importance levels are too high, 
right? Like the person getting rejected at the job interview, not getting the job because of high importance levels. This is a clear sign from the external environment saying, hey, your importance levels are too high. It's time to neutralize a little bit. And here's one more point. I'm going to include this right now before I forget, and I didn't write it in the five things I'm going to be going over, but this is really, really valuable in regards to importance levels. Having high importance levels does not mean you're going to get the thing. So what I mean when I say that is a lot of times people come to me and say, well, Renee, this really doesn't make sense. If I drop my importance levels on money, then how am I going to get it? Dropping importance or lowering your levels of importance or managing your importance levels does not mean that you stop taking action. It means that you do not go into the situation emotionally loaded, right? Like a loaded gun, that you need to see something happen or there are going to be negative consequences. You going into a situation emotionally loaded with the fear that if you don't get the thing, there are going to be negative consequences isn't going to make a difference of you getting the thing or not. Well, actually, it is going to make a difference of you not getting it, right? The higher you go, the higher your emotional state is going into a situation, the more you're inviting in probability that it's not going to go in your direction, right? But going into a situation with high importance levels is not going to help the situation. This does not mean that you do not take action and continue on your path towards that intention. Very valuable point. So three, run a negative slide. This is a huge one. I love me some negative slides. They are my bread and butter of my reality transserving practice. I absolutely would be lost without this concept. Now, I know it's a controversial one, and a lot of people are like, why would I want to envision me not getting what I want? And I'm going to tell you exactly why you should envision you not getting what you want. First of all, you don't live in that slide. You just play it once in a while, right? This is the slide of the worst case scenario. I don't get the job. The deal doesn't go through. The marriage doesn't go through. So a lot of times we approach situations fearing that they don't work out, right? Fearing sort of this kind of like unknown version of reality of it not working out. But most people don't even want to look at it, right? Like, I don't even want to think of my relationship not working out. But in considering your relationship not working out, let's say you've been with somebody for five years and you're hoping for dude's going to propose to you or was something big, right? If you can play in your mind for a very brief moment of time, five, 10 minutes, an hour, once in a while, that something happens and dude doesn't propose or thing doesn't work out for whatever reason, and you live in that and you sort of like accept it prematurely, Vadim Zeeland talks about it in the book, accepting defeat in advance. So saying to yourself, God, you know what? I think I would actually be okay. That actually might be kind of cool, right? Especially if you're an advanced trans server and you really utilize the concept of advantage. If boyfriend doesn't want to get married or whatever, then there's advantage. I'm free, somebody else is better, waiting down the line, whatever. But running that slide of being like, I will be okay. This neutralizes desperation, importance, pressure, all that kind of stuff, because you trust your world and it's okay if it doesn't work out, right? Playing the negative slide, and I'll put the link below for negative slide video, powerful video. Running the negative slide is the best way to neutralize importance, and I love it. Again, I would be lost without it. Four, make certain that you maintain importance management, right? Don't just work on dropping it once and then allow yourself to sort of revert back, which is what I think a lot of people do. 
especially when they read trans surveying, they're like, okay, I get it. And then they adjust their importance levels and then they sort of just gravitate back to that older version of themselves. That's why I love doing what I do now is because I'm constantly in a state of managing my importance levels, my mindset, my pendulums, my this, my that. That's why I love being in this position. It is like I have to manage it for my living, right? And I love it. But manage the thing and maintain lower importance levels. And again, dropping importance levels entirely, probably a little bit unrealistic, but you can definitely work on managing them consistently, right? And then lastly, note when you are working against yourself. This is such a big one. Again, putting pressure on someone, going into a job interview emotionally loaded, um, making a bad financial decision because you want to make money, doing something out of importance that is actually working against what your intention is, don't just do the thing harder with more importance. <laughs> Back up off the thing, work on your importance levels or lowering them, and then try again, right? And go towards that intention, just like Vadim Zeeland says in his book, like you're gonna go to the post box to retrieve a piece of mail. You're not doubting that the mail's gonna be there. Oh, it's important that the mail's there. I've got to get that mail, right? You're just walking calmly because you know the piece of mail is going to be there. Don't work against yourself by loading up a situation where you don't achieve what it is that you were originally intent you're originally intending on achieving, your original intention, right? Learning the nuances of understanding just this when you're working against yourself is reality lubricant. Once you can get this and you can start to truly manage your importance levels, everything sort of flows right up to you because you're not putting up your energetic resistance, which is ultimately what importance levels are. Right? So let me know what you think of this video, guys. Do you like uh, Importance 101 with a little twist? Are you new to this channel? Are you new to Transurfing? Did that clarify some things for you? Let's have a conversation about this in the Facebook group and make certain you leave any questions or comments below. Bye, guys. <laughs>